John Robert Tuohy is my name. John Morales is also what I'm known by, but when I got here in 1991 and I started to work in Spanish language TV and they said, John Robert Tuohy, you know, that's the Tuohy, T-O-O-H-E-Y, in Hialeah, that's just not going to go over. They're not going to understand it. They're not going to be able to read it. Can you come up with a stage name? And I used my mother's maiden name on TV, and that's how I've been John Morales in this market for about 23 years on TV. And I'm at my third TV station, which is quite an unusual thing to do, to actually spend your entire television career in one city. But what I'm trying to get across here is that I've been doing this for quite some time. And, well, you, you actually get to see the longest title today of the TED Talks, Forecasting Trust, Just Me, the Camera, and Thousands Behind the Lens. How do meteorologists connect with the audience that's out there. And why do we want to connect with you? That's what my talk is about today. Now, what I've done to prepare for this is that I've reached out to many of my colleagues, not just meteorologists across the country, but uh, just folks in news media and asked them, you know, what are your techniques? How do you do this? How do you connect uh, with your audience? So, uh, well, first and foremost, here's a quote from Jason Kelly. He's in Panama City, he's a meteorologist. It is more important to be on one's game every time, right? And to be sure of the information you're going to provide. Uh, duh, right? You better know what you're talking about if you're going to connect with an audience and if you're going to establish trust with them. And that is the first and foremost thing you need to do if you're going to be on TV conveying information. Now, by the way, when you saw that opening video, uh, I hope you noticed that as I'm going through the weather segment there, I'm looking at maps and I'm looking at the camera and I turn and I point at things on the map. But the weather segment is the one and only portion of the evening newscast that uh, does not have a script. There is no teleprompter for the weather segment. It is completely improvised, it is completely ad lib, and all I'm doing is letting myself uh, uh, follow an outline of maps and graphics that I've put together in a sequence prior to going on the air. But Basically, I'm just recounting what I'm seeing on the satellite pictures or on the temperature maps or, of course, telling you what the forecast might be. Now, what is my particular niche? Uh, you know, am I the funny weather guy? Well, probably not. Uh, am I the science weather guy? I, I like to think of myself that way, but sometimes, you know, the weather uh, or news consultants say, you're... You give too much science. You said the word front six times during your newscast. That is way too many fronts. Uh, within your newscast. And I go, well, what am I supposed to call it? A little thingy there that's heading our way? Let me say front. Well, the, the way that I believe that I've um, uh, built my niche in this market is as perhaps the non-alarmist guy. I am the guy that tells you what you can expect, just the facts, ma'am, and no hyper hyperbole and no uh, different uh, maybe a half dozen scenarios, including the most unlikely scenario that can possibly materialize, but yet some stations will tell you that just to keep you in fear so that you keep tuning in and keep watching them to see how it might evolve. You're not going to get that from me. It's not my style. I haven't done that in all the years I'm, I'm on TV. Uh, Jeff Baradelli, by the way, is, uh, is up in Palm Beach now. He's uh, uh, used to be here on Channel 4. A really good guy and a Cornell grad, may I add, so uh, uh, shout out for... Uh, for my alma mater. Jay Prater in Wichita, Kansas, lots of snow, lots of wind, but when he connects with this audience, he does it in an intimate way because he believes it is an intimate medium. You should always strive to engage uh, people in, as if they were an individual or just a very small group when you're connecting with them. And when I do this, I think I do it in that fashion. I, you know, I'm not standing in front of the camera thinking, oh my gosh, there's tens of thousands of people there watching me right now. No, I try to tell the story as if, if I'm telling it to an individual, telling it to uh, somebody that's uh, uh, close by. Try to place yourself in, in your viewer's shoes regarding the weather. You know, in the late summer, uh, you get into September now, fall begins, it's still hot and humid in South Florida. October rolls around, it's still hot and humid in South Florida, and people are really yearning to get that first cold front to uh, drop our humidity values and maybe get a little bit of fresh air, a little bit of fresh air into our air mass. Well, if you identify with folks and you share that joy of that very first cold front that's going to sweep by and get rid of all that humidity, I think that really helps you connect with them and it helps you be uh, 
genuine, which is a very important thing in this, and we're going to be talking about this too. Imagine you're telling the story to your best friend. Alicia Ortega, by the way, used to be an anchor here in Miami at Channel 23, Channel 6 as well, and she's made a tremendous career in the Dominican Republic, and she's a tremendous news personality down there. Imagine you're telling the story to your best friend. What a better way to establish trust you trust your best friend if you can make that connection, if you can feel like you're telling the story to your best friend, you're definitely going to get the message across. Uh, yes, indeed, being genuine is very, very important. Uh, I believe that by being genuine, you can establish the trust that is needed, not just in the happy, partly cloudy, couple of scattered shower days, but more importantly in those days when there might be a threat to our lives or our livelihood. What if another Andrew is headed our way, and that's only a matter of time, someday that will happen, sadly, and we need to be ready for that, and I need to be ready to convey a life, potentially life-saving message to my public. I think that if I've established the trust by them realizing that I'm just a genuine guy telling you the best possible story and forecast that I can, those folks are going to respond better to your life, potentially life-saving message and therefore uh, uh, do good with their family and keep them safe. This is very important. You know, don't fake it. Don't pretend to be anyone but yourself. If you're out there pretending to be someone you're not, people are going to see right through that. And you're never going to have a successful career in television. So this is a very, very important uh, message from Alina Mayuase at Channel 23. By the way, that was my first station here in Miami way back in 1991. I got here in 91, and in 92, we had Andrew strike, and it was terrible for South Dade. It was great for my career, yay, but it was terrible for South Dade. <laughs> Here's another guy for Channel 23, uh, Guillermo Benitez. He's, he's uh, been there for uh, eons, and I, I hope he doesn't hear that from me. Uh, but. Uh, you know, there's something intangible, that charisma to, that you can try to get the message across in, in a way that really connects with people. Can you let your charisma shine through the television screen? Just like I'm standing in front of you right now in the flesh and blood, can I get that across the TV screen too? I think I've, I've strived to do that over the years. I'm not a very charismatic guy necessarily, but you know, I try to at least let my genuine personality shine through, and I think people really appreciate that because they know what I'm all about, and I'm not fake, and I get that message across the screen. Again, the bottom line is be genuine, be knowledgeable, be non alarmist, at least that's mine, little uh, mantra, and earn the trust of your audience for that day in which you might have a life-threatening weather system heading our way so that you can better serve them and we can save more lives and hopefully save more property along the way. Now, I have brought a real-life example of what it is that I do and how I use uh, the trust that I've established, the connection that I've established with the audience uh, to be able to convey a message to them regarding a storm that was out there and looked at one point very much like Andrew might have looked as it was uh, possibly heading our way. So let's look at these real life examples. And Umberto Gabriel uh, could be a factor for not only Bermuda, but eventually the Canadian Maritimes as a dissipating system by this weekend. And then you see Umberto, which is expected to go north and then take a sharp left turn. And many of you that remember 20 some years ago, you might be remembering Andrew, which take a, took a sharp left turn too. But I don't want you to worry because it would already be above our latitude A and B, it's going to be nearly impossible for the system to cross the Atlantic without getting picked up by a dip in the jet stream or a front along the way. So that's just half of it. There's a little bit more coming. But I wanted to stop it here so that you get the, the idea of know what you're talking about. I definitely feel comfortable talking about storms and hurricanes after all this time. And talk to an individual. Talk to a small group. Don't think you're talking to a stadium of 50,000 people. You're talking to each individual sitting in their living rooms or lying in their bed, usually as they do at 11 some at night when they're watching the evening newscast. And I'm talking to that person. I'm saying you a lot. You might remember Andrew. You know Andrew took a left turn. You might be concerned. Let's see what else. And just so that you uh, can rest easy, well, I'll prove it to you. 
The spaghetti models here, the computer forecast models underneath the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the Hurricane Center's forecast goes out to five days. Uh, these forecasts go out to seven days. And there you see a turn to the north as something else is going to pick up uh, Umberto and turn it northbound. So I don't want you to sweat this uh, left turn here because eventually it would indeed turn northbound. All right. How about stepping into your audience shoes as well? You saw some of those recommendations from my colleagues. Listen, we, I lived through Andrew too. We all went through this back in 1992. If you've ever been through a hurricane like that, especially if you lived south of Kendall Drive, anywhere south of Kendall Drive, that's where the hurricane really struck. If you live north, by the way, little parentheses, well, since I have a minute 10 left. If you live north of Kendall Drive and you think you survived Andrew, you weren't really in Andrew. You saw the fringes of Andrew. Kendall Drive and South, that's where it really struck. And I get that, I, I, I'm telling you that because someday you're going to be in a real Andrew and you need to be ready for that. Bottom line, as I'm talking about this uh, this evening, establishing trust is what we're trying to do, getting a life-saving message across uh, and connecting with the audience. That's what it's all about. Thank you for your attention this evening.